Meanwhile, a rail project connecting Mexico's famous beaches to archaeological sites has become a major environmental hazard. Construction for the railway system meant to attract tourists to the Cancun area is starting up again despite growing backlash from activists. Although it requires overcoming various obstacles, we will complete our promise and the Maya train will be inaugurated in December 2023. This is the map of Mexico, and in blue you can see the Yucatan Peninsula in the southern part of the country. It is a richly jungled stretch of land with a beautiful white sanded coastline. The lush greenery of the peninsula is home to a diverse array of wildlife and indigenous communities. However, the Tren Maya, a controversial mega-project, threatens to disrupt this delicate balance. The train line aims to connect the tourist hotspots of Cancun, Tulum and Playa del Carmen with less visited regions such as Palenque and Calakmul. But at what cost? Already construction has begun, cutting through the jungle and destroying precious Mayan sites. Will the project boost tourism and bring economic benefits to the region, or will it be an environmental disaster and cultural tragedy? Who are the key players and what are their motivations? Can anyone stop the trend mire, or is it already too late? Let's find out. Before delving into the trend mire project, it is important to understand the history of Mexico and the context in which this project was born. Mexico is a country located in the southern part of North America bordered by the United States to the north and Belize and Guatemala to the south. The country has a rich and diverse history, with evidence of human habitation dating back thousands of years. The ancient civilizations of the Olmecs, Mayans and Aztecs left an indelible mark on the region, with their art, architecture and culture still evident today. Mexico was colonized by Spain in the early 16th century, and it remained a Spanish colony until the early 19th century, when it gained independence. The country has a rich cultural heritage with a vibrant mix of indigenous and European influences. Mexico has also had a turbulent political history, with periods of authoritarian rule and political unrest. However, the country has made significant progress in recent years, with a stable democratic government and a growing economy. Now, the Yucatan Peninsula is a tropical paradise located in southern Mexico. With stunning white sanded beaches and lush jungles that are home to exotic wildlife. The Riviera Maya, a strip of tropical resorts between Cancun and Tulum, attract millions of visitors each year. But there's more to the Yucatan Peninsula than just its gorgeous coastline. It was once the centre of Mayan civilization, a highly advanced society of mathematicians, astronomers, and builders who created incredible structures, such as the famous Chichen Itza Pyramid which is considered one of the seven wonders of the world. However, travelling from the tropical coast to the ancient ruins can be a challenge due to the region's thick jungle and winding roads. It takes three hours by bus to reach Chichen Itza from Cancun, and many other sites are so remote that they're rarely visited at all. Despite this, the Mexican president is planning to build the Tren Maya, a train that would run through the area connecting popular tourist destinations with more remote historical sites. However, the project has faced fierce protests and allegations of violating international law, leaving its future uncertain. However, if you are a tourist and have ever dreamed of exploring the lush jungles and breathtaking beaches of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, but found the transportation options a bit limited, well, you're in luck because the Tren Maya is here to save the day. But what exactly is the Tren Maya? The Tren Maya, also known as the Mayan Train Project, is a 1,525-kilometre-long railway project that aims to connect the major cities and tourist regions of the Yucatan Peninsula. Led by Mexico's National Fund for the Promotion of Tourism, FONATUR, the project consists of seven separate sections and will significantly improve transportation and economic growth in the country. The project was launched by the Mexican government as part of the National Development Plan for 2019 to 2024, and Fonatur announced the winning bid for the rolling stock and related equipment supply contract in May 2021. The railway line will pass through 29 stations in the five principal southeast states of Chiapas, Tabasco, Campeche, Yucatan and Quintana Roo. The Tren Maya project involves constructing a railway that will pass through dense areas of the Yucatan jungle, providing a direct link between the beautiful beaches of the Riviera Maya and the historic Mayan ruins. 
Additionally, the railway will connect to other possible tourist sites such as the delightful yellow city of Izamal and the fortified city of Campeche. But the Tren Maya is much more than just a railway project. It's a symbol of hope for the people of the Yucatan Peninsula, according to the Mexican president, Lopez Obrador. He sees the Tren Maya as an opportunity to revitalize the region and give social support to impoverished towns and cities. As tourists travel from place to place, they'll spread their wealth and improve the lives of people in poorer, less accessible regions. The Mexican president is fervently dedicated to providing social assistance to impoverished towns and cities. He believes that the Tren Maya is an act of justice as it will benefit the most neglected region of the Yucatan Peninsula. The train itself is no ordinary locomotive. The ex train from Alstom, which won the supply contract, features a sturdy design with a modular interior and a light body shell. The train can reach a maximum speed of 176 km an hour and incorporates the components and expertise of the previous bombardier, notably the Flex Eco lightweight bogey. The Hinbal, Janal and Patal trains are also designed exclusively for Mexico, inspired by the Mayan culture and incorporating the lines, speed and beauty of the Jaguar, one of the largest felines in the world. The passenger experience is a top priority for the Trenmire project. Each train features enough legroom at the seats and space to facilitate better movement inside the passenger car. Furthermore, each train will have sufficient luggage storage space thanks to overhead racks adapted from Alstom's intercity variant Coradia and vertical racks in each car. The fully flat floor design of the train will allow passengers with restricted mobility to move freely. The x will also feature high-performance heating, ventilation and air conditioning HVAC, and wide windows offering scenic views of the Maya region. Alstom Transport Mexico, Bombardier Transportation Mexico, Gami Ingenieria y Instalaciones and Construcciones Urales Procesos Industriales have formed a consortium that have been awarded an initial contract worth 1.3 billion euro, 1.5 billion dollars for the Tren Maya project in Mexico. The contract involves the supply of 42 passenger units that will come in three different configurations, 31 regular service trains, Hinbal, three long distance trains, Patal, and eight restaurant specialities, Janal. The consortium will also be responsible for the design, installation and supply of onboard European Train Control System ETCS, technology and over 1,500 kilometres of trackside equipment such as interlocking, traffic control and telecom systems. They will also establish repair workshops and garages and provide after-sales service for the equipment. The manufacturing of the rolling stock will take place at Alston's Ciudad Sahagún plant in Mexico, with the first units expected to be delivered by the first quarter of this year to begin system testing. So when will the project be completed? Mexico's Tren Maya project has been the subject of much discussion and debate since its announcement. Many were skeptical that the project would ever come to fruition, given the cancellation of a similar train line announced by López Obrador's predecessor in 2012. However, those doubters were proven wrong when construction began in June 2020. Since then, workers have been tirelessly cutting a path through the thick jungle of the Yucatan, with the construction progress reaching 25% within 18 months of the project's initiation. The construction process is not cheap, with the original estimated cost of $7 to $9 billion increasing rapidly and could balloon to as much as $28 billion. Despite this, President López Obrador is determined to complete the Tren Maya in the next two years, to leave behind a legacy for the Mexican people before his term ends in 2024. However, do the people of Mexico want this train? In Mexico, the construction of the Mayan train has become a contentious issue. While the project aims to regenerate towns and redistribute wealth, almost half of Mexico's population disagrees with its construction, according to a recent survey. President André Manuel López Obrador, who won the presidency on a populist ticket to create jobs and improve the lives of Mexico's rural poor and indigenous populations, has made the Mayan train his pet project. However, complaints of limited community consultations, incomplete environmental studies and threats to displace vulnerable supporters have soured some voters against the president. The train will run on existing tracks that need modernising but the government plans to construct the rest on public and private land, which means eviction for some in Mexico's Yucatan. 
The government has not provided specific figures on how many households it will relocate, but Calicho Escoffi, a lawyer who assists families facing displacement, estimated that more than 2,000 homes will be demolished to clear space for the train. As a result, the project has divided some friends and family over how to address Mexico's stark inequality. While the largely rural South has historically experienced higher rates of poverty and unemployment than the more industrialized North, some take issue with the project's very name, calling it an act of cultural appropriation that commercializes Mayan culture without including indigenous communities in the plans. However, Francisco Colli, a member of the Mayan community in the town of Hoktun, sees the president's ambitious focus on infrastructure as a way to create construction jobs that will allow disadvantaged communities to put food on the table. On the other hand, some argue that the Mayan train is just another project dreamed up by the powerful who will reap all the benefits. The train has backing from Mexican scion Carlos Slim, one of the richest people in the world. However, one of the major concerns is that the train's path will cut through thousands of ancient Mayan sites, many of which have never been seen by modern eyes. The Tren Maya is causing immense harm to one of the largest remaining rainforests in the Western Hemisphere. The workers have already cut through the Maya forest, creating a gash as wide as a football field. By 2024, tourist trains will run over hundreds of buried settlements, underground rivers and caves, which could cause damage and pollution. This situation presents a daunting challenge for archaeologists who are tasked with scouring the Yucatan Peninsula in search of undiscovered ruins. They have been tasked with finding and ranking Mayan ruins on a scale of 1 to 4, but any ruins deemed less than a four are likely to be destroyed or bisected by the train line. Unfortunately, many of the ruins found so far will likely be destroyed or divided by the rail line as they do not rank as highly important. The devastating losses so far include the destruction of millennia old Maya structures like homes and temples, as well as the discovery of over 600,000 fragments of ancient ceramics and 450 human remains. Additionally, there are over 900 caves and sinkholes that the train will pass by or over, which are important conduits to the Maya underworld. During the first two years of construction, over 25,000 Mayan buildings were discovered, presenting the archaeologists with the impossible task of deciding which ruins to keep. The archaeologists must rank the sites on a scale of minor to profound historical importance, as mentioned above, but they are working under difficult time constraints with some assessments given only 18 days for a task that should take two years. Furthermore, the Mexican authorities have only given legal protection to less than 15 sites so far, with just a few hundred buildings between them. The situation has resulted in an intense debate between those who want to preserve Mayan heritage and those who see the train as a way to create jobs and regenerate towns. Deep within the dense jungles of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula lies the ancient city of Pamul II, a magnificent complex of over 300 buildings, including several perfectly preserved pyramids. Although the Mexican government has agreed to elevate the Tren Maya train line above the city, thus preserving it, this is an exception rather than the norm. Unfortunately, the majority of the other priceless Mayan sites with their invaluable artifacts and centuries-old secrets will be flattened and replaced with the Tren Maya rail track. This raises the question of whether the benefits of modernization are worth sacrificing our connection to our ancient past. The Tren Maya project is facing heavy criticism, not just from the locals, but also from environmentalists who are concerned about the devastating impact it's having on the Yucatan Peninsula's ecosystem. Despite promises made by the president in 2018 that not a single tree would be uprooted, Nearly 150 hectares of forest have already been cleared, an area equivalent to 200 football pitches. Environmental groups have expressed alarm at the destruction of this vital habitat and the impact it will have on the region's biodiversity. The situation got even worse in January 2022 when the government announced a change in the train's route between Cancun and Tulum. Originally, the tracks were supposed to run parallel to the four-lane highway on an elevated platform. However, the new route now goes inland and lays the tracks at ground level, cutting through the dense Mayan jungle. The government cited several reasons for this change, including potential traffic and highway interruptions during construction, potential lawsuits from private landowners and the high cost of construction in Playa del Carmen. 
But this new route has only fueled environmental concerns as it poses a higher risk of irreversible damage to the rainforest's delicate ecosystem. One of the most worrying parts of the new route, according to experts, is that it will pass over Sak Aktun, the world's largest underwater cave system. Most visitors and Mayans are familiar with the system's cenotes, which are natural sinkholes filled with fresh water. The Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico boasts the highest concentration of cenotes in the world. Cenotes are sacred to the Mayans, in addition to being a major tourism draw, particularly for scuba divers and snorkelers. Mayans believe cenotes to be sacred because they serve as portals to the underworld. According to Mayan tradition, the god of rain, Chark, lives at the bottom of the cenotes. This could explain the numerous archaeological and anthropological objects discovered within the cenotes, which many academics believe were sacrifices to Chark in exchange for rain and agricultural fertility. Fossils discovered at Sak Aktun date back to the Ice Age and include Naya's skeleton, which is said to be one of the oldest and best preserved skeletons ever discovered in the Americas. The fossils and discoveries have aided research into human history and only a tiny fraction of the cave system has been explored so far. Environmentalists and cultural advocates are concerned that having the high-speed Tren Maya run directly above the cave system multiple times a day would put Sak Aktun in danger of collapse. Environmentalists also point to concerns that the noise and vibrations will be significant, which will scare wildlife and change the area's ecosystem and food web. Environmentalists are also sounding the alarm about the potential destruction of the Calakmul Biosphere Reserve, a vast and vital ecological area in Mexico that may be bisected by the Tren Maya project. This reserve is considered one of Mexico's largest and most valuable ecological zones home to a diverse range of species and ecosystems, including jaguars, monkeys and rare plant species. Despite the supposed legal protection of such areas, the Mexican government passed a national decree in 2021 that gives the Tren Maya project immunity from environmental regulations. This has sparked concerns that the project will have free reign to cut through protected areas and cause irreparable damage to the environment. Amid facing legal challenges and opposition from environmental groups, the Mexican government has already made way for the new Tren Maya route by clearing large swathes of the jungle. This has angered environmentalists who point out that President López Obrador made a promise back in 2018 that not one tree will be knocked down. Unfortunately, that promise seems to have been broken, with predictions indicating that more than 6,170 acres of jungle will have to be destroyed to make way for the train. The loss of habitat could have dire consequences, including the local extinction of already endangered species like jaguars, howler monkeys and ocelots. Deforestation would also have significant environmental impacts, affecting local ecosystems and contributing to climate change. Amidst all the controversy surrounding the Tren Maya project in Mexico, the biggest debate seems to be around the impact it will have on the people. While the government claims that the train will benefit impoverished areas, Many are skeptical about this assertion. The project has been met with protests and objections, including a recent act of defiance by Greenpeace organisers who tied themselves to heavy machinery at one of the construction sites, but the government ignored their objections. The Mexican government's stance is that people go first. We do not gain anything as a country having fat jaguars but starving children. But this overlooks the fact that the Tren Maya may not actually benefit the communities it affects. Moreover, international law dictates that the Mexican government cannot proceed with the project without the prior consent of indigenous communities likely to be impacted by the train's construction. Indigenous communities have raised concerns over the economic benefits of the project. In an open letter to President López Obrador, indigenous communities of the Yucatán Peninsula wrote, It's a tourism project that will only benefit the wealthy and foreigners. We who are the owners of the land will only see it pass by. They fear that the project will pass them by and leave them with little to gain. Furthermore, some Mayan communities are opposed to their ethnic name being used for something they don't support. However, there are locals who support the Tren Maya project and see it as an opportunity to generate new jobs and economic growth in the region. The United Nations Human Settlements Program predicts that economic growth will double along the route and poverty in the area will decrease by 15% by 2030. 
Additionally, the train could potentially alleviate the issues of over-tourism and environmental problems in popular towns along the route by improving travel efficiency and reducing heavy traffic. Despite criticisms from opponents who believe that the negatives of the project outweigh the positives, supporters of the Trenmaier argue that the state must make sacrifices to drive economic progress. They compare the project to the massive clearing of the Mayan jungle that began in the 1980s for mega hotels and highways, which they believe was necessary for economic growth at the time. Proponents also believe that the environmental concerns related to potential cavern collapses are unfounded and that the cenotes will remain accessible and enjoyable for tourists and locals. The train will also significantly reduce travel time, cutting the current 10-hour car ride between Palenque and Cancun to a four-hour train ride. In 2019, a public referendum was held which saw 90% of voters supporting the project. However, the legitimacy of this referendum has been called into question. Rural populations, who would be most affected by the train's construction, were unable to access voting stations, and some of the materials weren't properly translated into indigenous languages, making it difficult for people to make an informed decision. Despite falling short of international standards, the Mexican government went ahead with the project anyway, insisting the vote was valid and refusing to hold another. Indigenous communities who would be most affected by the project are worried about the potential damage to the local environment, the destruction of their Mayan cultural heritage and the risk of eviction. Despite delivering a petition with 250,000 signatures asking for the project to be halted, the government has refused to listen. The Mexican government's insistence on pushing forward with the Tren Maya project without the valid consent of indigenous communities has raised concerns about potential violations of international law. Despite widespread opposition from indigenous communities, the Mexican government is pushing ahead with the construction of the Tren Maya train project. This has led to a flurry of legal challenges, with over 20 injunctions currently being pursued through the courts. Although some have been successful in briefly halting construction, the train continues to inch forward. Meanwhile, many locals in remote communities struggle to attend court hearings and make their voices heard. The Tren Maya is intended to boost tourism in the Yucatan Peninsula, but at what cost? Will visitors still be drawn to a region that has lost its natural wonders and cultural heritage? The debate over this controversial project continues, and we want to know what you think. Should the project go ahead? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video.